So that says Nuremberg Trials. This is episode 2. We're 15 minutes into the 46 minutes, so it seems likely that this will require three videos to cover the ground, and that is the war criminal's ground and the shallow graves that cover up all of their genocidal sins. Okay, uh, I've revealed quite some of the scams already, and I believe that we got right up to the moment where we got the Donovan appointed as the inquest chair, and I played you a little bit about the Donovan song. I'm going to open another website just in case I get inspired and I have to show you the whole story in a series of musical parables. Okay, you know how ruthless they are at covering it up, but what we're focusing on here are the war crimes jokes, yeah, because that's what's going to bring the world of villainy to its knees. And never before have we had a war crimes investigator who's got all the current directorial links of the foreign secretaries. Yeah, that's since the EU gave themselves the peace prize. Okay, let's see if we can get this rolling again. I'll put the camera over there for fear of copyright reasons in some countries that close down my videos all the time. That's the G8 and the G20. <laughs> yeah, we're not allowed to use cameras in their meetings for mafia reasons. Okay, and the links to the Mafia film and The Godfather are absolutely massive. Yeah, and I've got that somewhere in my collection. <laughs> like Father Ted, the elf jokes, the inside the lion's den rugby frauds, the brave heart joke, the kingdom of heaven joke, the master and commander joke, the Ryan's daughter, that's the Madame B. Overy jokes. <laughs> The Amadeus jokes, the big jokes, the black books comedies, the offices featuring Gervais on the Rothschild interlocks, the treasure of the Sierra Madre and the gold jokes. The gold man is the director at Birmingham City Football Club, who I forgot to mention in the interlocks with Michael Moore the other day when the policewoman threw me out of her office. Okay, I cannot find the godfather. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but just look up the videos I've made on Martin Borman's trials and the jokes that they make and look at the images of the war crimes inquests on these pages. This is again, I'll give you it again, it's www.youtube.com watch question mark V equals N1 G I W A4 N C M Y. Okay, you need to do that really quickly because it will be disappeared like Deirdre Hutton has been from public consciousness. Okay? <laughs> Deirdre and Alistair Hutton are really innocent compared to these bastards. <laughs> yeah? And that's, that's Alistair that runs the Las Vegas military tattoo and is the director of the local British Legion. Uh, and all sorts of Freemasonic scams associated with Walter Scott and the killing of returning troops in the anti-communist movement which we're going to get to in a little bit when they launch the Cold War part of the sad, sad saga of how our leaders run the world and how reluctant the ordinary victims of that are to confront it <laughs> that's the people that were mentioned as recipients of my email yeah there are no Canadians in this story, which is why I keep telling you about Miss Tom's link to vast tracts of land through family members called Tom. <laughs> yeah, and the Thompson's Monument and the links to rural Britannia, which even my elderly mother-in-law, who's never left these shores, she understands the lyrics of that even before she visits our town. She can relate to who Thompson is and what the greatness is of Britannia that works at the whole of the peace-loving world's cost. She's a great admirer of that, and she loves to have ships sail on time, which we fell out about one Christmas dinner, <laughs> yeah, when we talked about the shipping empire that is Michael Moore's holdings registered in Dubai. <laughs> We're not allowed to talk about any of those issues at Christmas dinners now, since I became a fraud researcher 
and we're not even allowed to talk about the Prince's Trust and the local paper in the local cop shop. Anyway, this is why my batteries run out and this is why I'm going to put the camera over there so it's obvious to everyone that I'm just walk watching a video from range which is not a copyright infringement in my own home. Dagger always has to make hugely decorated two wars. We have gathered much of the evidence. Gerald no Arthur felt the trial would not have a real impact unless there were live witnesses on the stand being interrogated, telling it like it was. He thought that was the way to capture public attention. Jackson would have his way and the violently opposed Donovan would quit the trial, taking much needed talent and expertise. So that's Donovan, the Scottish pop singer joke, the Glaswegian pop singer joke. Yeah, and that all interlocks with all the jokes at the working man's expense involving Billy Connolly, Annie Lennox and the brutalisation of Africa so they can all become millionaires. And that takes the head of my local schools innocent young daughter into Malawi to dedicate her life to high risk activities in other people's country. He's a Burns Club leader too. That's Charlie Robertson. Oh shit, that could be the linkage to the Robertson black man jam jar jokes about every war and every profiteer in the HSBC building. And John Robertson Wright that attends the Church of Scotland but you cannot get two people to proclaim that, like St. Peter denied <laughs> Christ when the Fox News cock crowed three times. Anyway, back to the war crimes, because it's tragic. Germans were free to choose any lawyer they wanted, and they did, including unregenerate Nazis who might have belonged in the dock themselves. The defendants had, in fact, a guilt-edged defense. Any poor uh, defendant in an American court today would be lucky to have the quality of defense because some of these people were top. That's the Wilkinsons interlocks on the Rothschilds and the Cameron interlocks. That's the uh, Lord Abernethy in the SS in Scotland. <laughs> Lawyers in Germany, some of them went on to fabulous careers in the years following the war. The primary defense of the German lawyers of Nuremberg on the question Please see Cantor's songs a bit over there and watch the, the Godfather movie again and look at the inquests and look at the parody that is Nuremberg. The question of aggressive war was that the charge was ex post facto. They argued that never before had any head of state been called upon uh, to answer the crime of waging aggressive war and that there was no juridical basis for this charge. Sir Hartley Shawcross replied, I suppose the first person ever charged with murder might have said, now see here, you can't do that. Murder hasn't been made a crime yet. The tribunal said, the very idea that states commit crimes is a fiction. Crimes are always committed by persons. Men who exercise great power cannot be allowed to shift their responsibility on the fictional state which cannot be produced for trial. So the light that comes I'm into your room when you expose the... Now the accused film. Do you remember the Godfather trial? Look at it. It is a direct parody of all of that the court with their third cries. Not guilty. Herman. Please notice all of the military police are wearing white helmets like the police in the tax havens and the police in John Patterson's Brighton where my wife used to keep score for the Brighton at the Sussex County Cricket Club. <laughs> yeah, and she bailed it out of her oath to me as soon as I became a fraud researcher and she acknowledges that I always win <laughs> but even with that knowledge she's prepared to desert me for the capitalist 
and really bloody cause that is rule Britannia and the brutalisation of the whole of the world by the G8 countries and their subsidiaries in the G20 and the Arab funders. <laughs> yeah, none of it you're allowed to put on camera now. You're none of the proceedings in the divorce case are you allowed to put on camera and none of the proceedings in any of the criminal cases are you allowed to put on camera unless you pay the price for it. <laughs> right then. Again was the leader of a group of defiant defendants. At Nuremberg, his philosophy was, these people are not going to exonerate us. This is Victor's vengeance. They won, so we're in the dark. And uh, we can go belly crawling, which I'm not about to do, or we can hold our standard high, and we can go down with the swastika flying. He took that attitude, and his carryover influence from his position in the Third Reich was still effective over many of these defendants. He was able to dominate them, to, uh, to frighten them. So, you see the white helmets? <laughs> yeah. Fuerhop was released from the Isle of Man, where the white wear, uh, that's the Hitler youth man who became Tiny Rollins and ran the Lonro, Lonmin, kill the blacks in the Peyrine jokes, yeah, that all of the local people like Lord Sanderson of Bowden before I met Gordon Bowden on Skypey, which is the Intel tool, yeah, all of them laugh at that joke, yeah, because all of the world wars are for profit and all of them tuck it away in the havens from Switzerland to Bermuda. And the Pirates of the Caribbean is a sick parody on the whole thing too. Them, to intimidate them, and had a good deal of leadership throughout the trial. There was a problem big enough to swamp the trial. How to make the words of the court and defendants comprehensible to one another and to the world. An American judge and an English judge speaking of... So, this is IBM technology available to convict people in 1945. They need to pay a translator in Jedburgh Sheriff Court to come and do the work. Yeah? Computerised already in the days when the computer filled half of a laboratory and I was the owner of an IBM computer at Rothamsted, at, sorry, at, in Berkhamsted near Hemel Hempstead and the Butlins HQ for fraud. <laughs> yeah, right next door to our collaborators at Rothamsted who were nerve gas experts. <laughs> and my old boss was Dr. Potter, but that's a complex joke about religion and the war dead that I prefer not to cover for battery preservation reasons. Of course, English, so a Soviet judge speaking Russian and a French judge speaking French. Three languages there. The defendants were German. They had to be questioned in German, in their own tongue. So, French are always <laughs> in the very safe intermediary position. <laughs> and they can influence people with a new pair of silk stockings at any stage of the massive genocide that they adjudicate on and harbor criminals in as they party with the presidents before, during, and after the actual event and their treasures are left untouched in their beautiful city. Oh sorry I've touched a nerve. <laughs> yeah it's ever so easy to upset them when you're on camera and you're allowed to speak openly. IBM had an idea. IBM suggested some equipment that they were working on which would provide something that we take completely for granted today. Instantaneous translation. One of the most successful recruiting rounds for interpreters were international telephone. So in the Dr. Butcher Jones joke about Dad's Army, you now understand <laughs> that he's involved in the culling of the American Indians and now that I've learned to use Google Translate, yeah, I have learned that the Lalma Tunnel, where Princess Diana was killed, means the apple, <laughs> the original sin by the female, yeah, 
and they turned to the American Indian who was prepared to help the cowboys to free his country and to make it prosperous. <laughs> yeah? Centuries after the central bank had been disappeared into private hands, tonto means fool in Spanish and they think it's ever so clever to laugh at the culling of all of the pagan nations in the name of the one true God who now has become the false messiah that is the non-existent Jesus Christ and they're ever so defensive of that concept and it costs millions and millions of lives throughout world history Jewish, Christian, Islamic and the whole show is for brutalization for cash with Jesus. These people who used to work in very quickly with language and had very practical knowledge The most difficult and noble task of the prosecution was not to center the case upon the most lurid of the German atrocities and go for the patient, brilliant assembly of an airtight case built on the conspiracy. The greater goal was to convict the whole machinery of aggressive war on behalf of the humanity. I explained the treasures at Dresden and the uh, firebombing of that place led entirely by Bomber Command from Britain who received my email on who is the beneficiaries of all of these frauds yesterday that's the Air Force places all across Britain that now are policing NATO's efforts on other people's countries okay and the firebombing in Dresden is particularly wish vicious all of Churchill's orders are published on my website which is Prof George Lee's revelations under the no bombing zones in Oxford, Cambridge Heidelberg and Göttingen, all of them like Free France in Petty France in Buckinghamshire immune from bombing in World War II along with the Free Polish and the Free Polish still have directorates registered in London even in 2015 <laughs> I can give you their numbers and their names if anybody is interested in that relatively criminal profit stream relatively innocent profit stream I should say this is massive 80 million dead none of it justified by anything which is why I'm making the police aware of all of these crimes and responding them to by email as commanded by the ballistic blonde who threw me out of the office the other day after dozens of innocent bystanders had with understood why their pensions and their salaries and their pay fees have been screwed by financial fraudsters in all of these sectors that are still relatives of the world leaders at the SOE, at MI6, at all of the secret double agent societies run through Oxford and Cambridge like the apostles, like the haberdashers who provide the silk stockings to the French cowards and the assassination bureaus in France are run by Jacques Foccart and everybody understands that even Bruce Forsyth understands the genocides at the Villa Andrea in North Africa which is why I resigned when I published them anyway I'm wasting battery life okay you could have ravaged in January 5, 1937 in a secret meeting with his top political and military leaders, Hitler had announced. So, pay particular attention to his ID. I've already released it in video number one of the three. His name is Whitney, maybe Rolf, Harris. Yeah? Do you see how they cover up the genocides and turn it into a joke? <laughs> yeah? Rolf Harris when I first met Michael Moore coming off the helicopter from Afghanistan was the prize in the Lib Dems raffle it's hosted in a building with a ship like the Titanic coming out of the back wall and that is a joke about how they get people into global conflict okay Whitney is the name of the murdered pop singer and is the name of 
Prime Minister Cameron's constituency where my brother-in-law lives with my wife and he took me to the Chipping Norton uh, and the Roll Wright Stones to have a laugh at getting my marriage contract because they knew that someday in my life of insight and ruthless exposure of all of their capitalist crimes entirely for profit and to land grab other people's countries that the chipping stones joke is the same as the Mr Chips joke about sending innocent young English people even out of public schools like the Mr Chips joke into their deaths in uniforms that's why the English rugby team wears the deathly white colour and the, the car that is driven to assassinate people in the hitmen, gunmen sector in the mafia movies the cars are white <laughs> yeah do you get it killing the public school boys for a laugh at Twickenham and then they invent the chariots of fire joke and they persecute them if they're prepared to run for their country on a Sunday and all of my bosses at Sunderland University who are Zionists make those movies and the Mr Bean joke is ruthless and it will in the annals of world history be the thing that brought their jokes to their knees yet yeah, because it's about the genocides Mr Bean was the war correspondent for Gallipoli and it was his intention to solve the German space problem that this could only be solved by force and they did only question so listen carefully that's the space race launched in the 1960s all of it only on camera for technological reasons as the computer at IBM gets to be this size <laughs> yeah it is absolutely vicious and they always need a culprit and they always choose one of their friends yeah that's the treason and the vicious killing of your mates and that is the Valkyrie joke that is discussed later on nobody is allowed to live if they are decent and want to end the war quickly which is the uh, your country needs you uh, who was the man that was chucked off the boat by Churchill uh, your country needs you Lord Kitchener he also is part of the Butcher Jones joke because he fought in Khartoum after the original massacre and that whole of the brutalization of that country is about just the confluence of the North and the, the White Nile and the Blue Nile. That's where they come together and the Nile is a massive part of the 2000 year old religious fraud. It was called the Kush, then it was called the Pichon and each time its identity is revealed they have to change the story and launch Ethiopia into the religious story. Yeah? But the killings of all of those people 6,000 miles from home in the Sudan is absolutely vicious and that's what they live for that's what the whole story is about and the justification of that the clouds are tempted to dampen the story and I have no surprise at that the gods are looking at this every time it occurs and they know who the culprits are and they know that the innocents never get a mention at the war memorial every year was when and how. And from that secret meeting on, Hitler continued to plot his eventual assault upon Europe. Again and again, the eyewitnesses and documents brought Hitler's own damning words. It is my unalterable decision to squash Czechoslovakia by military action in the near future. It is the job of the political leaders to bring about the militarily and politically suitable moment. The world now looked in on a chilling series of top meetings with Hitler, von Papen, Goethe. Was that Lord Patton? <laughs> but Czechoslovakia is where Maxwell came from and the Cox came from same, same street address that is the people that get involved in British intel and then have to be killed because they are capable of releasing the truth about how the world is stolen that's Rupert Maxwell 
My wife used to accuse me of waking her up in the night like Rupert Maxwell might do and I still don't understand the accusation. <laughs> yeah. In Frick, Keitel, Yodel, von Ribbentrop, the rest. With the Sudeten man. That's the Oxford publishing empire of one of the world's <laughs> Intel services, yeah, who's linked to the shark joke coming out of the roof. That's the tiny Roland's, Roland's Gill joke about the brutalisation and the capitalisation of every public asset in Newcastle that was done by Tiny Roland in the name of efficiency and entrepreneurial activity. And then Lord Patton followed him in as leader of that university. And Lord Stevens, who comes in later on, is now the boss at the uh, University of Northumbria, used to be the boss at the Met Police. That is no surprise to anyone now. They own the whole of Britain by stealing and cheating and being capable of banging up the innocents. That's the Metropolitan Police <laughs> who train at Fetties like Tony Blair who resigned three days ago because all of this is coming onto his shoulders and he's incapable of standing up. Okay? <laughs> Czechoslovakia in Austria was subjected to secret merciless threats of military annihilation to make their fall to the Germans seem a desire from within. The prosecution traced back the carefully forged chain of criminal move. Did you know that there is a Christian saint in Holland called Annihila? <laughs> yeah, all of it is a vicious joke. All of the jokes about the Jewish angels. Raphael becomes the RAF that is obliged to fight in this country for this cause that is the cash. Right then. The trumped up evidence of the Reichstag fire to create crisis. The orchestration against perceived enemies of the Reich, trade unions, the churches. Beginning with the Nuremberg laws of night. Did you see that with the entrance into the church sector, the Piso horses galloping along as the people flee in panic? still used by the Metropolitan Police to this day and still used in the Shergar jokes <laughs> that take you into Irish <laughs> issues which I do not want to talk about we talk about it a lot they never get a life but the leaders of their political movements are just profiteers and the leaders of the religious movements are even worse because they understand what they're joking at and the sun has just gone in again yeah it is vicious. They're prepared to persecute their own nation for the cash bung and the division of the whole world as a fairy story. In thirty-five, Jackson dug into the campaign against the Jews. The legislation destroying their property and civil rights. Their systematic exclusion from professional, cultural life and education ending with vandalism, violence, and imprisonment on the way to calculated war and murder. Did you see the roasters under the fire? That's the joke about burning the bodies in Dresden and all of those towns as the Allied troops began to sweep in once the art treasures had been removed in the ambulances and in other cheap shot crimes. All of it is massive and all of it is coming out but they're not prepared to talk about it in the pubs of Scotland because the rugby is much more important and now we have a rugby player who's prepared to play for his country on Sunday he's an Anzac and a cover up for the butchery of the Anzac troops in the Mr Bean era when Gallipoli was brutalised by Churchill for the Rothschilds and the wealth of the oil on the Russian steppes that's what's going to bring them down. <laughs> Good. Good. And that's why you're not allowed to take videos of what you see in the local law courts, but that's now in the hands of the Prince's Trust and their affiliations to Scottish police, who are losing their jobs to the same vicious regimes, but they do not have a conscience as they throw me from their headquarters 
in my hometown after I've gotten dozens and dozens of signatures to the abuses of the government against its people. He said, I would hate to be a Jew in Germany today. Continuing to weave the net of a conspiracy against peace at the expense of the more sensational and easy... White phases. ...the grasped atrocities. I have, now found, I have now found footage of the death of Tommy Cooper live at the Palladium in front of HRH. He's laughing at the Islamic terror threat with the red fez on his head and he has his fatal heart attack right in front of HRH. She's a recipient of all of my website details and the horrible crimes of her government and the G20 leaders. She will do nothing about it and she's smiling broadly when I write to Cameron saying I want to meet him. That's the day they dissolved the parliament, aka yesterday. And John Patterson tells me uh, the story about the IQ of the police, which comes into this vicious, vicious set of war crimes very, very soon. All of them are traitors, right up to HRH. Prosecutor Robert Jackson pressed doggedly through the aggressive war charges. One by one, he documented the incriminating secret maneuvers of Adolf Hitler, each aimed at naked aggression and provable by a tra trained at Tavistock and at Liverpool and Beryl Brain Bainbridge wrote a book about that that has been burned like the events that were depicted when the fires happened and the Boston Library being burnt the same weekend as Mrs Thatcher was buried sorry the week before Mrs Thatcher was buried so that they could get people fearful about showing up at a funeral, funeral on the streets of London for fear of terror from Islam with the red face like Tommy Cooper. Trail of evidence. Documents under Hitler's signature read, no question of sparing Poland. We are left with the decision to attack Poland at the first suitable opportunity. He would say, I am only afraid that at the last moment some Schleinwund will make a proposal for mediation. The details that emerged were dry but unmistakable. How the men in the dock had cynically, murderously pushed an entire world toward devastation. The evidence showed that military destruction had not been enough for the Nazis. Plans in place set in motion a systematic annihilation of intelligentsia, nobility and clergy. The Jews and Gypsies would have their own hideous attention losing six million and five hundred thousand lives respectively. Directives were found that invited the link. Which is why Vinnie Jones, educated at the same school as Lord Boateng the munitions magnate and former treasury officer, <laughs> yeah, makes a movie about the gypsies being a vicious threat and when the gypsies dump the rubbish on the river bank of the most elite salmon pool in the whole world that is run by my uh, elite boyfriends eh, my, my, the, my best man and his working class mates as they salute to Walter Scott's sign about killing the working man every time they return from the great conflicts <laughs> it is really really sad eh, and what was I telling you there? Eh, so that's the links to the culling of returning troops in the name of the Walter Scott Foundation and all of the people that run our local councils and are running the persecution of me including Miss Tom, the former employee of the uh, local council yeah, she's Canadian the Canadians are massive war criminals that takes you into the Beaver books none of them are mentioned in this story and the only people, person that gets executed in Britain is Lord Haw Haw, which is the, uh, the Joyce story and all of the Falkirk false news to cover up everything that happened in 1945 and how the innocents get executed and the tyrants get released. And all of the names that come into this story are spookily similar to all of the names that Greg Hallett released when he was exposing 
the illegitimacy of our monarchy, who announced the event uh, for the second time with regret and a horrible stammer that is actually an act of God and reflects the fact that the man has only an IQ of 70, which is why they need to get the IQ into the cover-ups in 1945. ...of Allied airmen without interference from the police. Other decrees ordered labor czar Fritz Sokol to deliver five million captive workers into slavery that was often a death sentence. A Nacht und Nebel, or Night and Fog order, had the promotion of pure terror at its roots. People disappeared forever without charge or trial. The conspiracy spiraled with attacks on Norway, Denmark, Holland, Belgium, France, Greece, Yugoslavia, and Russia. Jackson pointed out that Germany never declared war under international rules, but... Yeah, like the deployment of drones everywhere in our world, it's now just murder by the governments and the cabinets. And when they took Bin Laden out, it's a total false flag news, which is why the body disappears off the back of the boat before anybody can verify it or justify it. Like the policewoman keeps asking me at the Kelso cop shop, can you justify what you're saying? And I've got the director numbers in my briefcase, but she refuses me the time to have a look. struck always without warning and always again the sign assurances of treaties. Goering would later boast that the Nazis had considered your treaties. That's the Black Panzer's joke which becomes the Pink Panther comedy featuring the illegitimate son of Lord Mountbatten, Peter Sellers, in the vicious, vicious crimes that occur in the Davos region where you're not allowed to know what the next plot is to steal from the people in financial services. That's Davos. Harold Wilson was one of the earliest chairs of the Bilderberg movement. That's Harold Wilson that carpet bombed <laughs> Ethiopia and the uh, Garden of Eden for the BP plant. Just so much the paper. All this conspiratorial horror run from dry paper would come to light separately from the graphically presented terrors of the genocidal death camps. The prosecution would show a film called The Nazi Plan, based on early German propaganda films and meant to demonstrate that they had planned aggression from the first. Its effect on the defendants was electric and jocular. Chirac thrilled to his marching Hitler youth. So, Pope Benedict was called Ratzinger and was a member of Hitler Youth with uh, Tiny Rowlands when he was called Führhop. Then they release him in 1942 into South Africa where the diamond and the gold wealth was but no longer is. Bering gleefully shouted the name of each plane and pilot he recognised. He whispered, even Justice Jackson will want to join the party now. And the Jackson joke about Andrew Jackson coming into the Marx Brothers song about the whole of the world and the whole of the jokes that they make, including the sanity clause joke, the sanity clause religious thing about Jesus never existing is their greatest ever triumph. It runs for 2,000 years and everybody is a victim and none of the pagans are left alive unless they're aboriginal and if they are they've got an alcoholism problem and all of the presidents in Australia are fascists even although many of them trade under the Labour title like Harold Wilson and Tony Blair who resigned three days ago. Shacked, watching his war production glorified asked can you see anything wrong with that? An odd von Ribbentrop breed. Couldn't you just feel the force of the Fuhrer's personality? The mood of the defendants changed sharply when the film turned to the cruel and humiliating kangaroo court trial of those accused in the bomb plot against Hitler. 
This is Operation Valkyrie, all explained by Greg Hallett, who used to talk to me all of the time, but suddenly, when he got into the Metropolitan Police area, he was silenced, and none of the things that he was talking about then, that were taken to British Police, that were taken to David Cameron, that were mentioned about the Commonwealth Leaders meeting to change the laws of succession, none of those things are talked about by the resurrected Greg Hallett with director numbers in Zahawi's constituency and it's ever so sinister that Greg Hallett the Kiwi will not reveal the war crimes joke about the Anzac war dead and who did that and what was the genocide in Armenia that was part of the wealth on the Russian steppes. All of it under the world's owner's thrall and that's the Rothschilds and the Balfours who keep coming into the interlocks in everything that they cover up in the investigative journalist sector that John Patterson inhabits, that Gordon Bowden inhabits, that the man Duff who runs the Forces magazine and his Jim Fetzer superior, all of those are recipients of my email yesterday. None of them have the courage to free the world. They're just quite happy with the trickle down. If I give you a conscience, maybe you'll change your mind because all of this is going to be in the annals of history. Unless you take me out, which will be really dangerous because everyone in my region is now complicit. As the Nazi prosecutor screeched abuse, the accused at Nuremberg soberly contrasted the vicious justice of the Third Reich with the even-handed tone of their own trial. Jackson, the brilliant rhetorician, was less skilled in the court remarks of cross-examination. His shortcomings were often shared by lesser prosecutors who became tangled in droning details. So can you see, all of it gets translated in 1945. All of it is on screen, but none of what they're saying is evident to the people. Yeah? <laughs> there is no soundtrack it's the same team, Axis and Allied, and what they did in World War I was particularly vicious, and that's laughter at all of the Black Adder jokes. World interest way. The fear of, of Justice Jackson was that the moral authority would just leak out of this trial as it dragged on and on and on. In the end, it lasted 11 months. He attempted to try to stifle the uh, amount of just sheer paper that the German defense could introduce. Jackson began to see the International Military Tribunal as foes arrayed against him. Especially vexing were his fellow American Francis Biddle and the Englishman Sir Jeffrey Lawrence. Lawrence wanted to rob the defendants of any... Uh, you might understand the significance of the Lawrence name. That's Princess Anne and the Lawrence case in London right next to my dentists in London. She was a lovely person. I would give her my truth any time, but I can't get anybody to explain the word truth to me. <laughs> yeah, I'm on bigger issues now, but my dentist was right across the road from where Stephen Lawrence was stabbed t to death. And that is just a cover for the fact that the people that I lodged with in Woolwich were worked at the Central Bank under Eddie George, yeah? <laughs> and the people that I played rugby with have now confirmed that they have horrible problems with their <laughs> illnesses, but that they worked for MI6. And it was the coach of the rugby club I played for in Woolwich. <laughs> yeah, all of it is my destiny. And when I went to Woolwich, and I went to the Admiralty buildings and you see what the Admiralty has done in the name of Rule Britannia which my wife and our mother are staunch supporters of <laughs> I am not surprised by anything that I hear in the world anymore and I have no friends and I do not miss the ones that have deserted me <laughs> that's almost all of them my dad is innocent my dad has fought for his country but my dad reads the Southern Reporter and tries to punch me when I get convicted, when I'm not allowed to plead guilty by Sheriff Drummond, who's fucked off 
because he condones the killing of returning troops and the Silver Arrows project and the total law enforcement scandal that is the lawyer legal companies in Scotland and all across England who steal from their people and use all of the laundering tools that are much more sophisticated than we had in World War II now that the computer is used for other purposes <laughs> they fear my computers which is why they are frequently crashed incapacity to claim that we weren't given a, a complete defense Gary has just testified uh, on his own behalf and then he's being cross-examined by Justice Jackson this is dramatic high point and everyone is waiting to see how the champion of justice and democracy deals with the, the champion of Nazi evil. I want to get what's necessary to run the kind of a system that you set up in Germany. Gehring has a leg up in this thing because Justice Lawrence keeps ruling that Gehring must be allowed to say as much as he wants to say. The usual. So that's Princess Anne Lawrence on the board of the Olympic commissioning bodies, on the board of the Football World Cup, and in the Irish profiteering sector through Martin Sorrell's sweaty invest in involvement. Yeah, that takes you into all of the videos we've made about the Cahills, the Irish jokes about Cahill being the Calvary joke, and about the American cavalry being also the Calvary joke the brutalization of Ireland for decades and all of the romantic songs <laughs> sung by the New York Police Department about divorce proceedings and the Pogues all of the cover-ups are ultra expensive and the new world order bans that have launched been launched into the public eye since I became a fraud researcher it must cost them millions or even billions of pounds a year just to cover it up in popular culture with the songs and the ancient songs that are in the operas are really vicious that's the foot of the willow joke that is too vicious to include in the Lord of the Rings story yeah, and the kissing of the feet and all of that takes you into the papacy and the behaviours of the fictitious Jesus Christ and the sun has gone in again rules of cross-examination but the prosecutor is able to, to crowd the witness to keep pushing him with relentless questions towards a trap and then spring the trap but when Gehring could virtually deliver lectures on the political science of Nazi Germany Jackson was never able to crowd him like that Gehring's two and a half day diatribe turned the court into a Nazi rally and made him the defendant's hero like an athlete who had saved the game had Jackson made a mistake in not going directly after the most hideous and hateful of the crimes and criminals? Would his great hope for convictions on a cosmic scale allow the main case against war to slip away into its own night and farm? When I go to the court with a poster of explicit images hanging round my neck, they are completely ignored. When I try to tell them what is on the poster with my son in the audience they tell me to shut the fuck up and when I tell them that I want to plead not guilty on my assault charge as I was advised to do by Dos Rau they tell me that they are going to stop the court proceedings they're going to ask me to leave the room as they discuss amongst themselves what they're going to do about that and then they tell me that I must plead guilty so I can never run for MP in this region which is why my dad tried to chin me because he read the Southern Reporter yeah and he thinks that I'm a vicious <laughs> woman beater yeah the links to the ambulance sector have all been revealed and all of the people that deserted me include my best man but I'm not allowed to talk about the details of the case and my best man would not even uh, relay my apology he got hit by lightning twice when I was in New Zealand and his name is Brown like the people in the movie and Gordon the traitor to his country who lives in Fife which is in the story elsewhere between the enormous scope of Robert Jackson's indictment
American technical miscues in prosecution and the surprising fairness of the proceedings, the Nuremberg defendants began to believe that they might yet prevail. But now the tide turned with the shocking testimony of the Nazi butchers who had run the concentration camps and extermination squads. Their testimony jolted the world back to attention. Almost offhandedly, Gestapo officer Otto Ohlendorf made his admissions. And how many men, women, and children <clears throat> did you kill during that year? <laughs> I want you to grasp the magnitude of how many tiers of cover-up there are. Yeah? So Whitney Houston, the Prime Minister's constituency, the residents of my brother-in-law who's funding my divorce case when it starts, all of them are in the Chipping Norton set. My brother-in-law's most inspiring character in the whole of his life before I got on to what they do with the Prime Minister in Chipping Norton and Jeremy Clarkson as the other diversion for their massive crimes in financial services and in the world's banking system. Yet all of it is a cover for all of this. This is huge. This is genocide, the killing of 80 million people in a premeditated campaign for cash. I don't know what the R stands for, but the Harris is my employer from Hemel Hempstead, where my wife and our brother in the Chipping Norton set comes from. Yeah, And all of that, everybody that works in Hemel Hempstead, where I, when I used to work with them, they're now in financial services fraud. I can name some names for you as arbitrary examples. Colin Shirley, <laughs> yeah, the uh, person that was in our birthing chamber uh, that got his son as an infant got hit by a cricket ball. <laughs> yeah, he used to play rugby with me at Aylesbury and almost every one of the Aylesbury directors is involved in the Rothschilds in the locks. Uh, the little handbook for that was in this room, but I've tidied it up because I'm on to bigger issues already. Yeah, the name of the family that got hit was Criddle. If you look up Criddle on Company Check, you'll find that they have got dozens of hits. And if you look up the name Pritchard, you will find that the Pritchards are a massive financial empire. Ken Pritchard had dealings in South Africa and his, bro sorry, his brother was in South Africa. His sister-in-law is Heather and she interlocks with, U with UKGov.plc in the Reading University mafias that run their laundering activities. As a neuroscience declaration, there are new no neuroscientists in that company. They are just a laundering tool. And right at the top of their food chain, you have Princess Anne Lawrence, yeah? And Ken Pritchard, a friend of mine who attended my wedding, present, pretended that he ran a franchise sandwich shop and he was scammed out of that and had to become a gardener rate in life, like Hitler. <laughs> and his daughter, Emily, like the woman in the Go East young man out of Folkestone joke, which is the David Copperfield film, yeah, little Emily, who got approached by the really <laughs> ambitious and entrepreneurial public schoolboy called Steerforth, yeah, she lost <laughs> her hymen to the capitalist cause, and all of it is just a joke, yeah. Ken's companies were never crashed. He's a traitor to his country and he's a slave to the Rothschilds. And as I mentioned in the earlier video, I've got the vicar's numbers in the Tring Church and the bell ringer at the Tring, Tring, Tring Church <laughs> who tried to offer her body to me was called Hoare, like Sean Hoare who was killed in the Free Press. Yeah, that's Rupert Murdoch killing Sean Hoare to make sure that none of the news is truthful ever since. That was around the same time as the Levison inquiry it remunerated all of the culprits in all of the more modern story that is the asset stripping of Great Britain in inverted commas. We have nothing left in the treasury. They openly declare that. The Bank of England issues only the money, the money to the elite friends of the toxic debt pools 
who are immune from prosecution as the local tenants get banged up by the social landlords who are not allowed to be identified, which is why Deirdre Hutton has disappeared from the public records. Anyway, back to the more serious war crimes, but the motives and the perpetrators are all entirely in pinstripe suits. And he answered, 90,000. With that information, we were able to... And the name Rothschild never comes into the story ever since the original Greg Hallett disappeared. Fella, that <coughs> contemporaneously with the German assault against Russia, four special action groups of the Gestapo and SD were sent into the occupied territories behind the German armies with, with a specific purpose of rounding up and killing all Jews and gypsies, intelligentsia, that they could get their hands on. The estimate is that two million people were killed by these special action groups. Ferdinand. So do you get the link between intelligence, double agencies and treason? Read Greg Hallett's stories on Operation Winnie the Pooh and all of the scandals about the double agents, many of whom are named in the story. And when they tell you who gets released scot-free, all of those names are in the list. From the man from UNCLE to Admiral Canaris, all of them stealing from the world's people through the same cabal, trained in the same institutions, and they pretend <laughs> that they are working for the world's people. And now that they've got no wars to engage in, and you don't have to declare it, they just do the killing with the drones. And they are marketed by Detweiler MacDonald. Detweiler is the man who leads the Von Trapp family singers into their career in the operatic sector. <laughs> and all of it is really, really funny. And thank you to the Brookses in my hometown for still being my friends and talking openly to me. That's the Brookses where the sun is registered on the BNP. And you heard this statement about fascism disappearing off the face of the earth. <laughs> yeah, the labels are irrelevant. The political parties are irrelevant. The religion is irrelevant. If you're at the top of the elite food chain, you steal from everybody else and you kill them at every opportunity so that you can have the big land grabs and the whole of the countries to yourself. And then you create the museum with the art treasures in it. This was the Commandant of Auschwitz. Hirsch explained his mission in great detail and without any great emotion. He had been called to Berlin by Heinrich Himmler. And Himmler had explained to him that there was a secondary war involving the struggle between the Germans and the Jews. That if Germany did not deal with the Jews at this time. The Jews would certainly... You may have noticed, sorry, in the earlier video, the Rothschilds were called the Bears, yeah, in Eastern Europe. But you may have noticed that they opted, when the pagans were culled, very early in European history, that they would become Jews, because the Christianity joke was quite old by then, and they wanted to have a way of being free from persecution, yeah? for anti-Semitic reasons, and that has been warmly endorsed since the Bushes became Lubavitchers and all of the workforce in the White House became Jewish. <laughs> and the other children of George W. Bush helped to convert the Christian text and the Talmud, and they work in the city of Rome. <laughs> Roy Germany. And it was Hearst's mission to establish at Auschwitz an extermination center. So this is likely to be the launch of Randolph Hearst in America and the massive castles that he has that look like schloshes, which is the, <laughs> the joke about Candy Schlosh and the abdicated king who marries Mrs. Simpson after her divorce proceedings are completed in the Candy Schlosh in Austria and Hitler's people come to their wedding. Isn't that romantic? 
and they get to live in free France for the rest of their lives and she gets buried in Frogmore which is the joke about the decent prince <laughs> coming along after she keeps kissing the frog which is the French romantic tale again <laughs> and she's suited up with all of the corsets and suspender belt that the bunny girls get for a laugh because that's the Winnie the Pooka joke it's the most devastating confession of murder by any individual in the history of mankind. The prosecution introduced a film called Nazi Concentration Camps, a compilation of death camp horrors which was assembled by America's noted film director, George Stevens. So, that's the name that started to get the woman in the cop shop really nervous. Lord Stevens of Kirkwelpington former head of the Metropolitan Police, lives in the Anik region, like my Facebook friend David Veach, who's involved in the paedophilia sector with the local police, like our friends in Hexham. <laughs> yeah, and everywhere we go, my friends are not really my friends at all. My relatives are profiteers in the Church of Scotland, and I'm ever, ever so ashamed of everything that they have done. Yeah, they all get heart attacks, they all wonder why, some of them get diabetes and they all wonder why, but John Patterson thinks it's impolite of me to remind people that they get cancers. And I tell him openly that I'm not an expert in cancers, but I am God-fearing, and I think he understands it really, because he sent me the death camp jokes featuring Andy Pandy and Teddy coming passing by in the pram, chucking all the toys out, and that's a joke about Andy Pandy in the death camp stripy suits. You might remember it. That's the Klaus Moswich BBC light entertainment sector when they made the Dr. Finley jokes about the risks of eating unkosher products in Scotland. <laughs> and then the man plays El Cid's rival in the movie about being the king's champion and the links to the royals is always an illicit one and is disastrous for every profession that engages in that because they become slaves to having to pay for the right to work as they cover up all of the scandals in all of the sectors. Yeah, that is the killing of David Kelly, uh, the killing of the people in the NHS sector who were killed by the murderous GP, uh, I keep forgetting his name, but he launches the Shipman scandals. So his name was Shipman. He launched the CPD process, which my brother-in-law now profiteers in, out of Hemel Hempstead in the early poor days where his mother still lives, <laughs> yet but refuses to talk to me since I became a victim of the profiteering. Yeah? That's the Hancock's dynasty, <laughs> yeah? the asset stripping of dentistry, the impoverishment of all dental students all across Britain, and the launch of the dentists from Lithuania and Poland, who are now my friends and realise the power of God and talk to me all the time. Sometimes they blush a little bit because they were brought into this region to contend with me. <laughs> but deep down, they are really decent people when they know the power of God. Many of these scenes were being shown to the world for the first time and produced unimaginable. And we are not allowed to smack my kids, so I let my wife do all of that and all of the knife throwing in our household since she discovered that I'm a really articulate fraud researcher and that her companies that she's working for in my house three years after she now cr proclaims that she left me. <laughs> yeah, It's ever so difficult for them to explain, which is why I'm not dedicating any more time to their crimes unless they're affiliated to this, which they are through Lord Boateng and the uh, Hemel Hempstead schools and the links to the Cahills and the profiteering yeah, in the manpower organisation that launched her into my life just as we were being rendered insolvent at Welcome, which also is a lie. That's kind of complicated, and I should not talk about that. 
because it makes it confusing for the listeners look at the bodies and know why we're not allowed to smack our children yeah and why the whole of our countries have been rendered defeat because everything that we run as an employer and a genuine country related issue that's the public sector all of it has been asset stripped by our politicians and our union members that's the Dave Prentice story which I was going to talk to UK column about last night but John Patterson deserted my cause because <laughs> they realise the gravity of everything that they cover up now and they begin to attack their own friends in the investigative journalist sector that's the bunny ears symbol that I'm showing you that all of them work for and understand which is why John sent me the death camp images from <laughs> BBC Light Entertainment as his last word in our discussion yesterday <laughs> have a look at the videos I made on that it is telling that none of them who are on my mailing list even in the RAF have the courage to, ref to confront the corrupted ministerial people that run our countries out of Whitney in this joke broke out of the courtroom women fainted and time after time the words of the leaders and followers who had caused it all arose from Britain records to condemn them Himmler had summed up the ethic I did not feel justified in exterminating the men while allowing their children to grow up to avenge themselves General Yodel said, if we had disobeyed, we would have... Have you ever wondered why we, on November the 5th, have a bonfire to celebrate the overthrow of the revolution against our parliament members? <laughs> Been arrested, and rightly so. Hearst quoted his boss, Adolf Eichmann, as saying, he would leap laughing into the grave because the feeling that he had five million people on his conscience would be a source of extraordinary satisfaction. The prosecution now began systematically to demolish the wall of just following orders that the high command had tried to build around itself. And that is what is so ironic. The blonde policewoman is just following orders from the Metropolitan Police that now run Scottish Police. Yeah, it's tragic. The spirited people of this region, who I know are still spirited, dedicate their whole lives now to the sports, which have also been defrauded. And when they were amateur, Scotland was capable of greatness and competing for world acknowledgement. But now we are just backed into the corner. We cannot even own our own slaughterhouses. Yeah, that comes up in Jedburgh Sheriff Court, because they know that it comes into a lot of the videos that I make. Uh, and it is totally twisted yeah everything they do everything that prince philip has done to our country is to asset strip its sovereignty and its capability so that if we enter into world war three we starve to death within a fortnight because all of the butcher meat now comes from new zealand <laughs> and a lot of the uh, christmas stuff comes from latin america which is totally owned by North America and all of that is the Chavez joke about the taking over of other people's central banks and the socialists that are revolutionaries in those countries are just highly paid capitalists like Red Ken in London Prosecutor Telford Taylor would say that men who commit crimes cannot plead as a defence that they committed them in uniform and that military uh, and Shirley Taylor <laughs> becomes a celebrity on the yellow brick road I think but I'm very short of my memory bank and I get a little bit confused she's one of the actresses that is launched to laugh at the whole story and the profiteering outcomes of it Men are not a race apart. And when I learn that, or I even watch the movies, the tailors that are related to my Auntie Mary with the links to Canada, <laughs> which my dad is on my side on, because when the Canadians came here just after the war was finished, they got other health care for free, and they got free lodgings 
with all of the victims that were prepared to fight for our country as Beaverbrook deserted it. <laughs> yeah, and became the head of propaganda and the air munitions industry. It is really, really ruthless. And that's why I'm hitting on Miss Tom and the Canadian connections in the Central Bank. Because it is really, really ruthless and it afflicts only the innocence of our world. Men above and beyond the moral and legal requirements that apply to others incapable of exercising moral judgment on their own. It was pointed out to Keitel and Yodel that when Field Marshal Erwin Rock... That's Keitel, the actor. Do you see how it works? Keitel, the actor. <laughs> Movies about, yeah, chivalry and sword fighting, yeah? Like the revolutionaries in France and the musketeers and Gerard Depardieu, the tax exile, who looks like Gary Armstrong from Jeddah, that I used to really admire for his spirited performance on the sporting venue. That's the Coliseum joke. <laughs> and the Chelsea Football Club joke, with links into the Russian Tsars and the Rothschilds. <laughs> and the Tottenham jokes are absolutely vicious. That's personal services and the killing of all those people when Winston Churchill was looking round the corner with the Met Police right by his side. That's the Sydney Street Siege and the training of Stalin in our country. Well, had received the supposedly inviolable order to execute all commandos as captured. He had promptly and contemptuously burnt it. Hard-fighting Nazis like Admiral Karl Dönitz would have their victories. Admiral Karl Dönitz. Look up Hallett's stories or Marie telling of them. They're all in the profiteering team, which is why they get let off scot-free. That's the Walter Scott thing that scares the shit out of the returning troops, because they get shot down by tank commanders from other places in the UK, just in case there are any familial guilt consciences or issues that mean that you cannot shoot dead your own children in a uniform because they are now returned and they are rendered useless to the world's owners and just have to be paid. Yet that's why the Glasgow riots were suppressed by tank commanders and in the Napoleonic days they killed 88 of the returning troops Yet just because they wanted to start the union movement. That's the anti-communist thing that little Kev Drummond is now really ashamed of with the Rothschild silver arrows and Davy Steele the profiteer standing by his right shoulder right next to BBC headquarters Selkirk where Ali Moffat at St Andrews University like Butcher Haig used to be is the boss of BBC Scotland and is now a millionaire and is now stealing from British kids in the university that he attended for free at the expense of his local council which is now in a massive debt pool because Alistair Hutton is a traitor and a profiteer in Las Vegas with a military tattoo and he's a staunch favourite of the Walter Scott Cullum jokes yeah and he's in the Walter Scott Foundation and like Lord Sanderson of Bowden is actually its boss for a few uh, years <laughs> and the directorships that they have at the British Legion and at the profiteering companies in other people's countries and the links to Michael Moore and Dubai and the Arab Chamber of Commerce is really really illicit when the dustbin men do not get a pay rise for seven years back to back and the dustbin men are leading union leaders and they also lose their documents and they get cancers and they're really loud on the bowling green but when they fall off the ladder as window cleaners they begin to get penitent and they begin to talk to me instead of scamming me out of my jobs in the pharmacy sector where I was forced to work as a volunteer in the governance of the profession that has been completely sold by the shipman scandal and you now have to pay a vast amount to keep your right to work. In what was known as the Laconia Order, he had directed that survivors of sinkings not be helped in any way by his U-boats. He had a very shrewd lawyer, a German naval lawyer by the name of Otto Kronzbuehler. Kronzbuehler 
managed to get an affidavit from Admiral Chester Nimmer. One has no idea of the familial links to Miss Manning and Bula and all of the sinister things that have happened to the ownership of Great Britain <laughs> since the Germans took it over. Yep, that's the Saxe Coburgs who kill <laughs> King Carlos I in Portugal so that they can extend their power base in Portuguese colonies all over Africa. That's the murdering and the launch of Carlos the Jackal into the false news sector. It's the hero of America in the Pacific War to the effect that the Americans had fought no differently. That in the, in the Pacific we had sunk what was there that we presumed the enemy vessel made no attempt to try to rescue. Yeah, so no questions asked get the numbers down regardless of the implications which is why none of the ships returned from Crimea yet they were sunk in the harbour as a joke at the dead troops from Russia from France and from Great Britain and in inverted commas just like cartoon the Butcher Jones joke Japanese sailors off of an air carrier that was going down the tactic would save Jervis' life the other allies were startled at how being So Donitz is a profiteer like Uncle Desmond Morton, like the Fleming family and all of those villainous names. Uh, and I believe that Winnie the Pooh was actually the king with the stammer, but I might be wrong about that because my memory's slightly frail. And this River Spree story in that becomes the uh, the it's a play on words. So the River Spree is where Hitler and his friends were laundered out with a think Bormann. Uh, and what you've got with the use of the word spree is the launch of one of the people at the inquest is just an anagram of the word spree. Spear. <laughs> Isn't that clever? And the Spears jokes take you, takes you into the record production producing sector and his majesty's voice and the little dog with the propaganda trumpet sat next to him his majesty's voice <laughs> do you get it yeah this is the german monarchs that came to our country changed their name and then barbara windsor becomes their cover-up and they get the badger culls through her husband's protests to divert the people from the sins that they commit in financial services and in Geneva. <laughs> the Russians demanded the death penalty for the now half-mad Hess. What was Rudolf Hess doing that back during the, the war when uh, people were... This is the Lady Hamilton, Lord Nelson joke again. The Hamiltons in central Scotland are relatives of the Hesses. And it's so complicated and all the cover-ups involve the jailing of the body double and the total liberation for, of Rudolf Hess for the whole of World War II since he made that trip to Scotland. And the legend that was that <laughs> Churchill had him killed, that's only the body double. Nobody knows what happened to the authentic one. For being exterminated en masse in the uh, concentration camps when hostages were being uh, but everybody knows where the Flemings are and they are still world heroes despite everything I've told you and despite the massive health crisis in the local Flemings yet yeah, even in the cuddling sector where I discovered the people that believe that, that that were our solicitors when we first came to their town they're Irish <laughs> yeah and they take me out for coffee but I have to pay for the coffee yeah uh, and they tell me that the financial crash of 2008 was an accident or just a cock up and then they retire really quickly because when I discover that the people that work for Tate's are now called Lees like the man who's the boss at the Bank of England since I became a fraud investigator he's also been forced to resign yeah? and all of it is a massive scandal uh, and his links to the ice rink take me back to world heroes who are the Flemings and get free trips in the sporting sector to New Zealand in the curling sector <laughs> and their interlocks 
take me into Julian Lamont, who John Lamont has denied ownership of, <laughs> but I'm not sure that I believe him since I learned about their links to Otago University and the Professoria and the current head, Kurt Krauss, which is part of the Paris, Texas joke. Done away with in batches of a thousand at a, at a time. Rudolf Hess was sitting in a cell in, in England as a result of